With three decades of experience of printing and embroidery, Acorn Printing have a client base including many household names and have even supplied t-shirts for the President of the United States. As the official team wear supplier for Bosra, you can order from our current range at tshirtuk.com. Good morning iRacing fans, this is Bosra Race Roundup, we're back for round 2 of the 2016 Bosra MSA Skip Barber Championship. This week's race comes to you from Sebring International Raceway. Last week's winner, Fahim Antonides, well he'll be looking for another good result today. So let's head over to the qualifying standings and see how everybody got on. Taking pole this week was Tabolt Soberand, a 224-365 ahead of last week's race winner Antinades. Alan Piercy makes it a great start for XL Designs, two of their cars within the top three. Underhill in fourth for Acorn Printing. Fifth is Ben Hackerson ahead of Neil Bamba and then it's the Bird Brothers, Barry and Tony. Matt Talley is in ninth ahead of Martin Gwenicke for Motorsport Auctions in tenth. Phil Gregory is in eleventh, followed by Russell Barnes and a bad start to the season for Van Delden, he's in thirteenth. He's ahead of Whitehead in the final XL Designs care, followed by McCain and Brandon. In the second half of qualifying, it was Simon Jackson in 17th ahead of David Waldock. Darren Ford's in 19th ahead of Chris Butterall. 21st is Ryan Walker. He's another one not having a good start to the season. He's followed by David Rowland and Ricky Green. Francis Winnell is just ahead of Jonathan Beresford with Jan Malazava and Ian Thorne next. A key back to the only driver this week not setting a qualifying time. So a great lap from Sobran to take all this week. We're going to jump on board with him now and take a tour around Sebring International Raceway. If you're looking to upgrade your racing experience, then head over to Bowdoin Solutions. They offer the first and only bolt-on load cell brake mod for Thrustmaster pedals, and the TXG27 adapter allows you to use your Logitech pedals with a Thrustmaster wheel. See the link below for more information. So Bran getting a good exit out of the final turn, Sunset Ben turn 17 here at Sebring, about to start his fastest lap of the session. So he's carried a lot of speed out of that final turn, and now we make our way down the main straight up towards the first corner. This is the left-hander. This is a bit blind coming into here, you want to talk as close into the barrier as you can. That makes sure you don't run too wide and you see the cone on the right hand side. Stay within that so you don't pick up any incident points and forfeit the lap. Into the next left hander, this is turns 3, 4 and 5. They sort of open up a little bit on you, a great set of corners. Into this one, this one tightens up as we go through and onto Big Bend. This is the fast right hander very shallow corner making our way down to turn number seven this is the hairpin so we're going to be right hot on the brakes for this one keep an eye for the lines coming up on the floor as we approach the corner that will give you a good indication of where to brake for this everyone seems to be going at the second white line maybe a bit further after that so to bolt now through here nice and clean doesn't run wide on the way out of there and now making our way these up to turns eight and nine so Brand, as you can see, dropping down the rankings from his previous lap. He's now currently sat in ninth place with a 227.720. So now through turns 8 and 9 up towards turn 10, this is another tight right-hander. You can take this with quite a bit of speed, though, if you keep the car tucked in. Now coming up to turns 11, 12 and 13, this again will finish in another 90-degree right-hander. Gives you a bit of breathing space out on the back end of the track. Trying to adjust some settings on the car if need be. So into tower now and nicely through there from Soberand. Now we're making our way down towards the back end of the circuits. Down towards turn 14, 15 and 16. This is one of the most enjoyable and fastest parts of the circuit. Nice fast flowing corners. Coming into the right hander at turn 15 though. We do drop a gear. Keep it nice and tight into here. Don't run wide onto the turn back on the left hand side of the track. But here, as you can see, turn 16 Le Mans, how wide you can take that without picking up any incidents. That allows you to come into the corner quite nicely and not run wide. If you do get a good exit out of there, it is a great place for passing, especially in the Skip Barbers, so we're expecting to see a lot of drivers tucked up behind each other. And as we come down to turn 17 Sunset Bend, quite a difficult corner. This is where, if you have got an overtaking chance, to get on the inside, get on the brakes quite late and take the position. So coming into the final corner now, Sobran, to complete his fastest lap of the session. It's quite tight, opens up a little bit on the way out. You can run quite wide here. You can see the entrance to the pits on the right-hand side. So that is Sobran's fastest lap of the session, a 2.24. 4.365. Looking at our timing screen, it is very slightly out, but iRacing do record it properly, so don't worry about that. So a 2.24.365 from Sobrand. Let's head down to the race and see how it got on. The Synology DS216 Play is a two-bay NAS featuring 4K video transcoding and powerful processing capabilities. Complement yours with Seagate NAS hard drives for the perfect high-capacity storage solution. See the video description for more details. 
Round two of the 2016 Bosra MSA Skip Baba Championship about to get underway. All the drivers waiting patiently for the lights to go green. It's a fantastic start from Sobran then in first place. He's followed by Antonides and Percy off the line. Underhill stays in fourth with Hackerson and Bamba behind him. All the drivers making their way down towards turn number one now. Hopefully not too many collisions as we come through here. Will everyone be respectful and get through without any incidents? It looks like we're getting through okay. No doubt Antonides will be putting the pressure on right away, especially with his teammate Piercy just behind. So Sobran doing his best to stay out front. We'll see how the race develops then. Moving on now to halfway through the lap, we're following Ricky Green for Bowden Solutions. He was up the inside of Jonathan Beresford. This was the fight for 23rd and 24th. Ricky getting the move up the inside into the turn, but then there's ever so slight contact between them. Ricky Green going off track and into the wall. Early repairs needed to Ricky Green's care. The start of lap number two, this is David Waldock and Alan McCain. McCain making the move up the inside. Ever so slight contact between them there. The cars just behind all getting involved, and as you can see, many of them taking a tumble and off track. Plenty of cars needing to return to the pits for repairs. Drivers further behind getting the yellow flag warning and coming through trying to dodge all the carnage going on in front of them. So David, as you can see, has lost his front wing as well, so he'll be another driver to the pits. Still lap number one, this is the drivers that were just in front of that carnage that we've just seen. This is Russell Barnes and Matt Talia. So Russell Barnes on the inside, Matt Talia on the outside. Touch between them, Talia is off track. Van Delden on the left hand side of the track. He's followed by Gregory and Jackson just behind. So Russell Barnes gets spun, Talia goes through and then Van Delden and uh, Jackson get caught up in that. So Van Delden, a not good start to the championship from him. Chris Butchall making his way through and getting between the cares. Now we're moving on board with Simon Underhill. He was chasing the race leader of Soberand. Underhill had managed to get past both Antonides and Percy and up into second place. Then a dive up the inside of Sobrand took the lead of the race for Acorn Printing. Sobrand just going to sit back and uh, sit behind Sermon for now. I forget we've got the Ullman straight coming up towards the end of the lap, so will he make a move further on? So we're going to stay on board with them and see how this develops. Just while we do that, let's just remind you about our Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please drop us a like on our Facebook page. The same with our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed to that yet. Then and head on over there and get signed up. Also, you can follow us on Twitter. There's plenty going on through there from our partners. Uh, advertisements coming through all the time from Motorsport Auctions. They've got some great gear for sale at the moment. So, Sobrand and uh, Underhill come in through Le Mans Corner onto the Ullman Street. As we saw in the qualifying video, if you can tuck up on the back here, this is a great example of it. So, Sobrand right on the back of Simon's car now, pulling to the inside of the track, making our way down to turn 17. And that is Sobrand back into the lead of the race. We're going to move on now though, we're going to jump on board with Martin Brandon for Team Clockwork. You can see Alan McCain there on the left hand side and Jonathan Beresford just ahead. This is a 5 for 22nd, 23rd and 24th. So Jonathan Beresford and McCain both involved in incidents early on in this race. Jonathan Beresford involved with Ricky Green and McCain involved with the incident at Turn 1. But as you can see McCain's involved again. Martin Brandon gets spun out and off the track. He rolls the car. We're going to go now and see this from the rear end view of Martin's car. So we're going and be looking back at Alan McCain this time as Martin gets it spun around the right way. So here is the view from Martin's car, Alan McCain all over the back of him. So we don't know if this was just Martin too heavy on the brakes into this corner and Alan not expecting it, but a little slight tap up the back end and that is it for Martin. He's going to need repairs to the car. Back up now to our race leaders, so it was still so brand lead in the race, but Underhill had been demoted to third and Antonides had picked up away so wide through Le Mans and onto the Ormond Strait once again, running onto the Rumble Strip there. You can see the stricken car of one of the Team Clockworks just behind, letting the leaders come through. So Antonides again getting the draft on Sobrand coming up into the final turn. A carbon copy of the move we saw by Sobrand on Underhill a few laps ago. So Antonides moves up into first place, so Brand will just stick behind him, not too much resistance offered there into the final turn. So XL Designs up into first place, will it be another win for their team this week, we'll stay with it and find out. We're going to move on now to one of the other XL Designs team cars, this is on board with Ben Hackerson, he was following the 822 car of Bird just ahead in sixth place. Both cars wanting to come into the pits, but Ben coming in a little bit too hot here, not expecting Bird to be so heavy on the brakes as we come into the pit entrance. Both cars into each other, Ben lucky not to get involved into the wall. Barry in front just having to get the car spun back round, so Ben takes advantage and jumps into the pits just ahead. 
Moving on to the 70 car of Jonathan Beresford, still sat in 23rd place. This is on lap number 9. Jonathan driving for the Seagate and St. Orgy team, coming through the back end to on the Ullman straight here. So Jonathan coming through here, going ever so slightly too wide, just touches the grass with the back end of the car. Almost keeps it straight, but unfortunately for Jonathan, he's into the wall. Another driver needing repairs this week. Managing to keep the car going and getting it back on track. You see the steering damage there, pulling to the left-hand side. So Jonathan steering it and getting the car back to the pit. Now to a battle that had raged on lap after lap, this was Chris Buttrell in 10th and Simon Jackson in 11th. This was lap number 9, so it was Motorsport Auctions versus Bentley Boys Racing. This time it was Simon Jackson getting the tow and through on turn 17 onto the main straight. Chris tucking in just behind Simon now. We will come back to this in a minute, but we are going to skip forward with our race leader, Neil Bamber. You'll see him there just in the pits in the distance on the right-hand side. Sobrand then retook the lead of the race on lap number 15, so Sobrand for Team Clockwork going well. And Tenedis comes through as well, Bamber down to third. Moving back now to the battle involving Chris Buttrell and Simon Jackson. Chris had managed to get back ahead of Simon. As you can see from the leaderboard there on lap number 15, Bambo has dropped down to fourth after his pit stop. So Simon is all over the back of Chris Buttrell's car, coming up to the right-hander. Both cars on the brakes. Chris leaves the gap open. Simon takes advantage of that, but Chris gets the better drive out of here. He then has a look up the back end of Simon, closing in all the time. And through the left and now into the next right-hander. So Chris up the inside here. The speed advantage into the corner. Chris back up into 11th. Simon then cuts back, tries to go back around the outside. But as we come up to the next few corners, Chris has got the inside line into the left-hander. So he'll defend the position from here. Fantastic driving from both Butterall and Jackson, and it would go all the way down to the wire. This was the final lap. Chris had had the advantage down here, but Simon got the toe in behind and cuts up the inside. Into the final corner, Chris catches up to the back of Simon once again, but has to jab on the brakes to avoid hitting him. That puts Chris out wide of the track, actually rubbing it into the wall. So in the end, Simon took the position. He finished in 12th ahead of Chris Butterall in 13th. Moving on to our race winner though, it was Sobrand who took the win, a first victory for him and Team Clockwork in the Championship. Round 2 here at Sebring, congratulations to Sobrand, Anthony Dees in 2nd and Alan Piercy in 3rd. Motorsport Auctions are the global marketplace to buy and sell used race and rally cars, parts, transporters and associated equipment. With competitive pricing on all types of membership, list your items now at motorsportauctions.com. To confirm the race results for round two here at Sebring, it was Sobrand who took the win for Team Glockwork. He picked up a extra bonus point for fastest lap of the race. Antonides finished in second for XL Designs ahead of Alan Piercy. Piercy picked up two extra bonus points for finishing with no incidents. Neil Bamba is in fourth ahead of Simon Underhill and Tony Baird. Ben Hackerson finishes seventh for XL Designs ahead of Matt Talea for Seagate and Synology. In, next in the Seagate and Snorgy car was Phil Gregory, he was ahead of Darren Ford. Darren Ford was another driver who finished the race with no incident points, so two bonus points awarded to him as well. Simon Jackson's in 11th after that epic battle with Chris Buttrell, they sit ahead of Andrew Whitehead and Martin Gwenicke, David Waldock in 15th ahead of Ian Thorne in 16th. To 17th, it was Jan Molesva ahead of Russell Barnes. Van Delden, our 2015 Driver of the Year, he's having a bad start to this event. He's in 19th ahead of Barry Bird. In 21st, it's David Rowland ahead of Jonathan Beresford with Francis Winnell in 23rd for Tech Speed Racing. Alan McCain, he was involved in a few on-track incidents this week. He'll be hoping for a better race next week. He finished ahead of Martin Brandon. Uh, right at the back, it is two of the Acorn Printing Cars. Ryan Walker, he was two laps down. And Actar, 14 laps down, not picking up a bonus point for completing 80% of the race. Two rounds in and the Drivers' Championship will now start to take shape, so it is Antonides up top at the moment with 47 points ahead of Soberand in second with 44. PC completes your top three on 42 ahead of Neil Bamba in the first of the Seagate and Synology cars. Simon Underhill's in fifth for Acorn Printing ahead of Matt Talea and Darren Ford. Chris Potterall's ahead of his teammate from Motorsport Auctions, Martin Gwenicke in ninth. Phil Gregory sits in tenth ahead of Ben Hackerson with David Waldock in twelfth. Tony Bird in the first of the Bird Brothers in 13th, head of Andrew Whitehead and Simon Jackson, Barry Bird in 16th for Tech Speed Racing. Further down in the second half of the table is Bowden Solutions in 17th, 18th and 19th with Melezeva, Van Delden and McCain. 20th Ian Thorne ahead of Russell Barnes and Martin Brandon. Ricky Green's in 23rd ahead of David Rowland and Ryan Walker. Jonathan Beresford's in 26th ahead of Marion Bradshaw. Francis Linnell for Tech Speed Racing in 28th ahead of Ian Robson. And Actar still yet to score for Acorn Printing in 30th. 
Excel Designs have also taken an early lead in the team standings there ahead of Seagate and Synology, the gap already over 20 points. Team Clockwork are in third ahead of Motorsport Auctions, Bentley Boys are in fifth ahead of Acorn Printing, Tech Speed Racing on 29 points, just a point ahead of Bowdoin Solutions. That is it from us here at Sebring. We're back in two weeks' time. We're going to the Lime Rock Park for round three. Make sure you tune in to see the race highlights from that. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>